What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. And I am so excited because now, ladies and gentlemen, we have finally got to the nitty gritty. We got to the good stuff. We finally got to season two, episode three of The Proud Family. And this is when the wokeness really starts. I'm excited. So let's break this episode down. Let's not waste any more time, guys. All I'm going to ask you is two things you guys already know. Please consider giving me a long view duration to help us fight the YouTube algorithm that we, that we fight every single day. And give the video a like if you guys enjoy the review. I would greatly appreciate it. With that being said, let's get into the review for The Proud Family, Louder and Prouder, Season 2, Episode 3. So guys, why am I so excited for this particular episode? Well, it's pretty straightforward. This particular episode is the one that went viral. This is the episode that's started talking about reparations yes this is the episode i am so excited and we're gonna showcase exactly how it led up to this moment and this is why i watched the entire first season for you guys so you guys can get the full context of exactly what happened leading up to this moment that went so viral online so let's talk about the episode so the episode starts off with uh, penny having a dream of her and dijanae because this is going to be their 14th anniversary as friends they celebrate it every single year and it kind of shows them as kids together and she's just imagining what it was like having a friend for so long. She talks about the fact that she's on the debate team, which is how this whole reparations thing starts because the topic of the debate is reparation. End up saying that Chloe actually is sick right now and she's incapable of, of joining the debate team like she always does and they need to find someone new for the debate team and Penny is thinking about that and freaking out about it. She also mentions a meme that was online about the dress. If you guys remember the whole gold and white or blue and black dress, uh, two people, you know, people saw two different things depending on a certain situation so penny ends up looking at her phone because the alarm is going off and realizes she's going to be super late and then after the intro rolls you see penny on a scooter doing some insane moves trying to get to school on time where she ends up ordering food from the wizard's restaurant because she's trying to kiss ass to the teacher knowing that she's going to be late check this out egg and cheese biscuits from mcwizards girl you won't grab jelly or red what kind of question red so Penny's trying her best not to be late, ends up getting to class. The class is already started, of course, and then the teacher is trying to look for Penny, asking where Sister Penny is at. Remember, they go, they call each other sister and brother in this particular classroom. But keep in mind, with Chloe, they don't call Chloe sister um, or brother or anything like that. They don't call her sister. They call her ally. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you know, I just I just caught you you're gonna see that soon don't worry it's gonna be pretty stupid so Penny ends up getting to class obviously she's late she's bringing food for the teacher but the teacher said he doesn't eat swine because it's against his you know I guess maybe his religion or he's just a vegan who really knows and it ends up talking about the fact that they've been invited to the semifinals of the debate team but unfortunately ally uh Chloe is incapable of joining check this out crowd has made it to the state semifinals oh, yeah. I'm asking for a volunteer to join our outstanding debate team as ally zoe has lost her voice and will be unable to compete it is so fucking cringy that they call her ally zoe i called her chloe my mistake zoe they called her ally zoe man god jesus man this this episode is gonna really take it far it's gonna take it far it's gonna be great guys stick around for it so they're looking for people to volunteer for the debate team. Obviously, nobody wants to volunteer. He makes a joke about, oh, it's not a vaccine lineup, so why is everybody being hesitant? Of course, they had to throw that in there. Um, and then Dijanae ends up sleeping in class. She gets woken up, ends up saying something completely stupid, and gets basically um, picked to join the debate team. Penny does not want Dijanae to join the debate team because she sees Dijanae as stupid and tries to find literally anybody else who would be willing to join the debate team, but everybody is turning her down. Check this out. I think she just called you a racist, Penny. Black people can't be racist. I agree. Racism is prejudice plus power. But we can be jerks. I give you that. I'm here. So they want to feed the narrative. <laughs> this is the latest episode. I was waiting for this. I've been waiting for this for so long with this TV series. I'm excited. I'm reinvigorated again. So they're trying to make the notion that black people can't be racist. That's what they're trying to teach young black people. That black people can't be racist because according to them, the definition of racism is to be racist, prejudiced, and also have power, apparently. And they only view white people as having power and black people having no power. So, of course, they're trying to go with this narrative that black people are incapable of being racist, but that they're supposedly able to be jerks. That They're giving us that bone, that black people can be jerks. It's such a... 
it's such a stupid narrative. And again, uh, I'm not surprised that this is in the Proud Family Louder and Prouder, especially the episode leading up to the reparation debacle. But let's continue. So we end up having Dejanae talking to Penny, and she says this. I'm on your team, but I'm not wearing your little blazers, and I'm not learning your secret handshake. Wait, wait. We've got a secret handshake? Nobody told me. And most of all, no posting pictures on hologram. And if one of you Poindexters tags me, my ring. Dejanae wants nothing to do with the debate team because she considers it to be all nerds. And Penny doesn't want Dejanae to be on the debate team because she considers her stupid. They end up having a, not a falling out, but a little bit of a scuffle uh, verbally, and they go their separate ways. Then we end up seeing the prompt where it says, social media does not prevent social interaction. This is a discussion that's happening right now on the debate team where you have Dejanae going against one of the other people on the team. Check this out. And by the way, your picture was a lie. <laughs> In submission. Social media gave me a life, y'all. Call me Dejanae. So the kid ends up getting called out for being a catfish on social media, which is very common on social media. Then the teacher approaches the team and says this. Check it out. You got the power? I got the power. I don't got the power. <sighs> So Myron ends up getting stage fright. He's incapable of going through with the actual debate because he's a complete chicken and just is, is just not able to. And then the principal ends up saying this to Penny. Check it out. Lewinsky returns. I'll pick a teammate that is yet to speak. Thank you for your cooperation. The only person that has yet to speak, I believe, is Dejanae. So after having a huddle, Dejanae ends up going to the podium and now has this particular discussion where she actually impresses everybody because she's able to have a photogenic memory by just reading Myron's notes in the book. He's a She's able to memorize all of it and just spew it out without even knowing what the hell she's talking about. Check it out. Social media does not prevent social interactions. Well, let's examine the facts. Social media has been integrated into our daily lives and marketed as a social necessity. So everybody's looking at her shocked because they cannot believe that she is saying what she's saying because, again, uh, she's done no research whatsoever. All she did was look at the book, and she's able to uh, memorize the entire thing and repeat it in, in arguments during the debate. So it impresses everybody, and she ends up winning the semifinals for the team, and they end up going to the finals. So that's where everybody starts celebrating, and they're super happy because they won. Obviously, the other team is crying it off because they lost, and they're asking how she did that, and she says she has a photogenic memory. Then they end up meeting a new student who is going to go against them in the final. And this guy seems to be some sort of a foreigner. I think he was speaking French or something like that. I'm not really sure. Check this out, because Dijanae ends up falling for him, of course. <laughs> My mistake, he's Haitian. So they end up, uh, obviously, she's falling for him. And all the girls like him, of course. It's just a typical thing. And Myron's completely confused as to why they like him. He says that he's nothing special. But, of course, he's going to say that. He introduces himself to Dijanae. Dijanae has no idea what the hell he's saying. And then um, she ends up going with him anyway. Dijanae starts to blow off Penny because she's too busy hanging out with this dude and going on dates with him. And Penny realizes that she's losing her friend little by little because Dijanae hasn't had a boyfriend since uh, Stinky. And he's not even what I don't even think he was really her boyfriend, if I remember correctly. So Dijanae, of course, goes on multiple dates with him, still continuing. And then Penny ends up blowing up about it. Check it out. I got you something. What's this for? Uh, our 14th friend anniversary. Oh, thanks. I forgot. I thought you had an eidetic memory. Not on everything, girl. Only the important stuff. So she ends up playing Penny and saying that her uh, friend anniversary is not important anymore. And uh, Penny obviously gets pissed and says, you know what? Screw it. She ends up stalking Dijanae and her boyfriend to the zoo. And then this happens. Check it out. Dijanae. You posted 500 photos on hologram. We need to speak. Sure. Come on, Darius. No, in private. Go ahead, darling. Don't. So she ends up saying that they need to speak, and Penny is not having any more, and says that Dijanae has been completely obsessed with this dude 24-7, and has completely forgotten her as a friend, which Dijanae says, you know, that's basically her problem, and ends up walking away. Then Dijanae ends up getting confronted with the book, because there is a book that she was using to memorize, obviously, all the notes and whatnot for the debate, and they found the book at the zoo, and it came out of her boyfriend's bag, 
not her bag, even after confronting her and telling her that the guy is obviously using her just to win the debate, um, she doesn't care. She thinks that that's a lie and they're going to keep going what they're doing and keep dating and all that shit. Until this ends up happening. Check this out. What? He photographed all our research. He's been playing you, Dijonay. I know the feeling. I've been used by so many girls in the past. <laughs> I never thought you'd be such a hater. All of you! I'm out! So even after confronting her with proof that uh, her boyfriend is using her, she still is uh, on his side and refuses to believe it. Then it's time for the debate to go down, and then they end up confronting uh, the boyfriend where she throws literally everything in his face from the book. Check it out. About those notes you stole. And don't lie because the powder don't. Dates, dinners, doggy bags for your uncouth brothers and sisters. Oh, you the one thing you don't do is talk about Dijonay's brothers and sisters because obviously uh, she's going to get very ratchet when you bring them up. And of course, they're going to make her go completely insane right here, right now at the mention of the brothers and sisters. Check it out. You about to get it now. Don't talk about my brothers and sisters because trust me, you don't want this smoke. <laughs> So after beating up her now ex-boyfriend, she ends up going to the debate and saying that she's going to uh, help them win. And they ask her, how are they going to win if he has all the notes about everything that they were going to talk about? It makes it very difficult to do it. And she says, it's not about what you say. It's about how you say it. Now, this is where the good stuff happens, because as you guys can see, the debate topic is reparations. If you look at the background and you already know where this is going to go, it's going to go into the famous scene where they talk about reparations. The boyfriend ends up starting the conversation all beat up. Check this out. Earn reparations and I don't need them. Y'all. <laughs> Take a listen. And this is where it begins. Um, I can't play the entire scene, obviously. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen it on Twitter. But this is the Slaves Built the Country song that you guys saw going viral on Twitter, where you got the five kids on stage talking about how terrible white people are, how only black people built this country, spinning the exact same bullshit narrative that a lot of black people like to spin. And ultimately, nobody is listening to this nonsense because we all know this is not real history. They pick and choose certain aspects of history that they enjoy and they hide the rest because they don't make it doesn't make them look very good in the public eye they want to make it seem like it's white people that forced everybody else into slavery not realizing that black people sold other black people into slavery not realizing that the first slave owner on record in the united states was a black man they don't want to talk about this stuff and they want to say oh well he owned slaves because he had to like what <laughs> what do you because the white man told him he had to are you serious no free black men owned other black slaves and they sold other black people into slavery as well because slavery was a business. Slavery was a trade business that was very legal back then. Nobody's saying it's great. Nobody is saying it's the most amazing thing in the world, but slavery was a very real trade. It was a very real business back then and it is still practiced till this day, which is amazing that all these activists never want to talk about that because they're too busy enjoying their Nike Air Jordans, not realizing that that was made from slave labor or they're too busy tweeting on an iPhone, not realizing that that was also made from slave labor. So again, this whole narrative about slaves built this country is such a bullshit narrative, but it's just something to help them feel better. But check out some of the clips. Check it out. Slaves built this country. Tilled this land from sea to sea to sea. First it was rice, tobacco, sugar cane. Then Whitney did his thing and cotton became king. And we were its soldiers. Four, Four million, million strong. Fighting for America's freedoms even though we remained America's slaves. slaves. Built this country. This hands up, don't shoot bullshit narrative has been debunked so... Oh my God, bro. Seriously, this this episode, this is why it went viral, because this particular episode is such a joke. It really, really is. I've watched so many YouTubers, black YouTubers especially, debunk this entire freaking section, and they tear it apart. Well-known people tear it apart, and rightfully so. This is trying to push a victim narrative to these young black kids that are going to be watching this TV show to make them feel like the whole world is out to get them. To make it feel like that they're owed something and that they shouldn't have to work for anything because they were owed something because of what happened in the past. And even funnier, I feel really bad for Zoe in this particular episode because, again, they use her as the poster white child. They use her just to hold up a sign that says still has not atoned for. Zoe, apparently, who is friends with all these people, 
has not atoned for the sins of her ancestors, even though it probably her ancestors probably didn't even own slaves. But still, she hasn't atoned for it because she's white. It is such a terrible, terrible narrative to push on kids. And really, this right here is where the wokeness really starts for the Proud family. The fact that they even felt okay with putting this in this TV show is such a fucking joke, and they should get destroyed for it. They really, really should. Because again... I gave the first season of this of this TV series um, above average scores. I gave it on average of, you know, anywhere from a 5 to a 7, usually depending on how the story was. And it wasn't very consistent. It was up. It was down. But overall, it wasn't too terrible. This fucking episode and what's been leading up to this episode, I saw it coming a mile away. I saw it coming in the last episode where you introduced a teacher who is obviously indoctrinating these kids. These kids are getting this idea from that black teacher that's in their classroom. I guarantee you. Because he's the one that talks about this in his classroom. He had it up on his um, chalkboard in the last episode, and now we're seeing the results of it in the debate team. So it doesn't surprise me at all. Of course, they're going to end up winning. They recreate the meme, and then after that, the kids end up making up. Dijanae makes up with his, her ex-boyfriend, who is now probably her boyfriend again. Who really knows? Dijanae is just all over the fucking place. Penny and Dijanae end up making up as well. Gets her flowers. And if you look at the trophy, it's such a... <laughs> It's such a black trophy, man. It really is. Uh, but again, um, I'm not surprised. Penny ends up looking at pictures on her phone of Dijanae and herself. And then the episode ends from there. So, guys, there it is. I mean, now we have finally hit in season two what everybody was talking about. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are very much as annoyed as I am looking at this particular scene. And nobody, honestly, black kids should not have to deal with this shit. Black kids should not have to be taught to be victims black kids should not have to be taught that they're owed something they shouldn't have to work for anything like this whole reparations nonsense again for people who never experienced slavery now we're now we're in two generations of people who haven't experienced slavery and again slavery still exists till this day of all different races and creeds and all that stuff and you should be fighting against that but no you're too busy on twitter pretending like you're oppressed in america this is a shit that's helping uh, that this is not helping black kids at all. And it's unfortunate because, again, this TV show could have done a lot of good. But now it has gone down the complete rabbit hole. So with that being said, this episode for the Proud family, Louder and Prouder, would have got around a two to a three. But because of this bullshit scene, I'm going to give it a one out of ten. This episode is trash. The entire concept is. The entire mindset of this episode is complete trash, and it doesn't deserve a single view from anybody other than rage watching YouTubers like myself who put themselves through this so that you don't have to. It's at this point that if even if I was a fan of the Proud family, I would have stopped watching at this point because now it has become a political agenda TV show. It is very obvious. They've been hinting at it little by little, very little by little. I'll admit it's been very subtle, but the last two episodes especially has been hardcore hinting at it, and now we have this episode where they just went full on mask off. They're going for the jugular. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. And if you did, consider leaving me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Hypnotic out.